Greetings from Mirrorland. I can't say exactly when it had started. Perhaps it had started right after my birth. As far back as I can remember, my life has always been like true hell. Mirror has remained my worst nightmare. I was always attracted to them, no matter where I was or what I was doing. As a child, I would randomly stop an exciting game and start making rouge lips with mum's lipstick in front of the huge mirror in the hall room. I never got away with that, and my mum always used to trash me for that. Hell, I didn't even want to do it. It was almost like I was forced to do it by something. Some mysterious force, or even someone's will. I was twenty when I really realized how fucked up this was. But nothing had changed for me so far. I was still very dependent on mirrors. Oh, actually one small detail had changed. I had been scarred by this earlier. But then I was just sick and tired of it. I hated my own mirror reflection. I hated its silly facial mimics, its awkward and clumsy gestures. And I was forced to repeat this after her so many times. Oh god, what shitty makeup you had there. I would never make it this way. You just make me totally mad. Do you hear me? I hate you. Bitch. I was only able to get a short-term rest at late night. I noticed that the mirror was losing its power hold over me. It was such a relief. At last I could finally live my life with more freedom, without experiencing a constant, minutely need to pull a pocket mirror from my coat and powder my nose. I even went as far as changing my daily schedule. I started to sleep during the daytime and be awake at night time, but I still couldn't manage to sleep at daytime. This force I've already mentioned was waking me up all the time. It would drag me to this goddamn mirror. And I always saw her. This damn wretch who got enough sleep, her disgusting makeup was present. I never really knew how much longer I would last. But one day everything changed. One random event. Just one small coincidence which was good help for me. She stood in front of the bathroom mirror and started to comb her hair one late night. I myself was repeating her movements as usual. All of a sudden the light bulb started to flicker and die down. Corridor lights penetrating the room were bright enough to discern human silhouettes, but not bright enough to keep me chained. I felt that nothing could control me in this moment, and I could control my body. Shocked by this discovery, I raised my hand and waved in front of her face. I saw her scared eyes staring at me from the other side. It made me grin. This cowardly bitch ran away like a chicken. But it was too late. The next morning, she went there again. Of course she did. She needed to check her ugly makeup again. Anyway, though she was a bit cautious after the nightly events, she still dared to approach the mirror. At first, I accompanied her whilst relieving the fact she can no longer control me. I repeated my movements after her, combed my kinky hair, made up my lips and repaired my eyelashes by applying mascara. When we were done, I raised my hand and touched the mirror with it. She couldn't deliver any resistance. Hypnotized by something mysterious, she did the same thing. She connected her hand through the glass to my cold fingers and blinked surprisingly when I disappeared. I was here behind her. Without giving her time to recover, I shoved her back quickly, driven by sheer impulse. I felt something similar to a static electricity charge on my fingers. My fingers became so wonderfully warm, so alive. She was trapped on the other side. I looked in the mirror, smiled to her and left her shocked to the utmost extent to consider what had just happened. And I needed to consider it as well. My move was unintentional. I've done what I've done by pure chance after all, so yeah, I too was a little shaken up. You know guys, I like your world way more than my native one. It was faint and muddy on the other side, if the whole world was covered by a coat of dust or some kind of translucent vellum paper there. However, your world is so bright and colourful, so entirely real and so alive. 
and I am real too. Her, or rather I can call them mine from this moment onward. Friends told me that I've changed. They don't recognize me anymore. I decided that a couple of small lies wouldn't do any harm. I told them that I would change my life. I told them that I would clean up my act and start to do something beneficial to my progress. Read intelligent books instead of wasting my time on nightclubs and other stuff like this. Deep in my soul, I felt victorious. It was such a triumph for me. I always knew that I deserved this life and this world more than her. And you know what? I'm not alone. There are plenty of us here. I know it's because we can recognize each other at a glance. We're even calling ourselves the Order of the People from the Mirrorland. Sometimes we arrange private meetings to discuss different matters. <laughs> Just joking. We never gather ourselves together and we call ourselves people. So do you. What are you talking about? What issues? Yes, there are issues, but who cares? Are hearts located on the right side of our chests? Hell, how can anyone know it? Anyway, doctors, for God's sake, don't make me laugh. If we needed any medical assistance, we could always resort to the services of well-known, to us, doctors who are also suffering from this rare biological anomaly. The kind, beautiful girl you always see in the queue area whilst you go to your local Walmart branch to buy some food, or random fellow bus passenger sitting behind you on your way to the workplace, or even your junior sister whom you always take to school. Are you sure none of these are one of us? We are among you, and our numbers are increasing every hour. By the way, do you remember this silly urban legend? I mean the horror story where it explains how you meet your counterpart from the other side of the mirror by standing in the dark for a while and then lighting a match in front of the mirror after this. It was invented by one of our guys. Isn't it cool? The day this joke was spread on the internet was our big holiday. Many of us burst into your world on this day. It was a beginning. This day was a starting point of our new lives for hundreds of us. And it was a starting point for the lifetime sentence of hundreds of your relatives either. Funny thing is, this joke is still working. We like to live here, we like our lives, and we won't go back because we strictly follow our main commandment. We never look in mirrors in the dark. Personally, I removed all mirrors from my bedroom and put a small wall mirror in my bathroom beside the wardrobe. To be honest, I got rid of all glossy magazines and polished objects in my room so there wouldn't be any possible reflection left. <laughs> I even almost removed my TV. But in the end, I decided that this security measure is a bit overly excessive and unnecessary after all. When night comes, I draw the curtains, shut the windows firmly and cover the screen with my second blanket. I also hide my music CDs just in case. I even turn my cell phone upside down in order to not look at its screen accidentally. Because one thing I know for sure, these people on the other side only get a small chance to gain their real life in the darkness. And if they succeed, there will definitely be nothing capable of stopping them. Be sure of it. During daytime, I like to come close to the mirror to see her from time to time. But I'm not afraid because nothing can threaten me this time. I love to see this rage in her eyes. Yes, this is the same rage I myself used to feel in the past. Well, babe, I stole your life. You have the full right to hate me now. Sorry for being unable to enjoy your burning glare from behind the mirror any longer. I have to go. My friends are waiting for me. Bye-bye, sweetie. Love you. You'll see me again soon.